good morning everyone and welcome to au and welcome to au bank's earnings calls a uh, call for the fourth quarter of fi21 we thank you all for taking the time to join this call and i hope you are all safe and well on the call today we have our md and ceo mr sanjay agarwal our executive director mr uttam tigriwal and a few members of our senior management team i would now like to invite mr gorav jain our group head of ir from the md's office for the opening remarks thank you team good morning everyone and i hope that you are all safe and healthy amidst the ongoing challenging environment we want to share our reflections on our performance during fy21 overall despite the challenging context especially in the first half of fy21 our performance has been extremely resilient we were able to keep our asset quality in check strengthen our balance sheet increase grand value of our deposits and significantly bolster our grant banking and digital properties i'll take a few minutes to share some color around these points when the pandemic hit last year we took a number of steps to address the challenges that arose first thing we decided to do was caring for our employees well being we started initiatives like covid related insurance and ensure no layoffs for me and we the usual disbursements and uh, around increments and bonuses as we as uh, we had previously planned we also ensured that they were we were there for our customers and maintained constant touch with them through the pandemic on the financial front we maintained excess liquidity with every lcr in first half of fy21 at around 150% what is the regulatory minimum requirement of 80% we took accelerated provisions and further strengthened our balance sheet by raising capital and selling our stake despite the challenging circumstances our performance was very resilient we increased our customer base to over 20 lakh customers we increased our deposits by 38% and improved cash ratio from 14% to 23% our cost of funds reduced by 86 bits which allowed us to maintain stable spread We increased our EUM by 22% despite major disbursements in the first half. We delivered a very resilient ROE of 12%, excluding the one-off gains from the sale of our stake, and 23.4% including profit from our. Despite taking all of them, despite taking accelerated provisions of rupees 380 crores, overall. Our performance has significantly increased our confidence in our customer segment, asset class, and credit underwriting. Further, we continue to invest in building our franchise. Our people strength increased to 22,500 employees, and we expanded our brand presence and opened 37 new branches. We now have 744 touch points in 15 states and two union territories. I'm also pleased with the progress we made towards becoming a tech-led bank. We launched our super app in Q3 and are working on adding new products and service journeys. We also launched video banking and UPI QR and continue to increase our internal digitization. Coming to the topic which probably would be of most interest, asset quality, our growth entity went up to Rs. 1500 crores, which is 4.3% of growth advances, up from 3.7% in Q3 on a pro forma basis. The increase was driven by 1.5% pool of customers who are less than 90 DTD and paying, but was 128, and have been now set with NBA. We expect majority of this pool to regularize over time. 90 plus DTD and NBA have reduced from 3.3% to 2.7% quarter on quarter. It is important to note that our selection efforts have been lower than usual due to stay on NPS application and are also our approach towards genuinely impacted borrowers. Overall, given the segment we operate in, which is reflected in our yield and the lower selection efforts, we strongly feel that we have done well in this challenging environment. Situation on the, on the ground is evolving with the second wave of infection. Our on-the-ground feedback suggests that the situation in poor markets is relatively more stable compared to the urban market from a healthcare point of view. We are hopeful that with the ongoing vaccination drive and actions taken by the government, the situation will stabilize in the near future. In the interim, we will maintain a positive stance on this percent, but continue investing to build our franchise and technology. In light of the evolving situation around COVID-19, 
and the uncertainty it creates. The board of directors of the bank has considered it prudent to not propose any dividend for the year ended 31st March 2021. Our recent capital raise strengthens our position to take advantage of the opportunities that lie ahead of us. We feel truly humbled to be able to serve the nation as an essential service provider in these trying times. With this, we can now move on to Q&A. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? May please press star in the one on the dash phone telephone. If you wish to ruin yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is in the line of Havik Dave from Nippon and Jam Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, sir, uh, just wanted to understand your uh, views on uh, incremental asset quality in the sense uh, we had a thousand crore kind of NPL and 500 crore that got added during the quarter. Uh, wanted to understand, uh, I, I understand that we've given some details on the 541 crore additional that we have uh, had to recognize an NPS because of the daily stamping. But uh, uh, what what is your, and we, we've still provided 30 odd percent on this as well. So, wanted to understand how how is this different how is the school different that we need to provide 30 odd percent uh, on this as well uh, and if they are if they are starting to repay or some of them have already repaid uh, and uh, secondly uh, going forward with the covid uh, wave in uh, continuation with what is happening currently uh, how do we think about our customer segment uh, and asset quality uh, of the, for uh, for the year effect to as a whole so just uh, what your best judgment would help uh, in uh, on the asset quality front that's my first question yeah, hi, Harry. You know, uh, good morning to all. You know, uh, I hope everybody is very safe and healthy. You know, very tough times, but we all have to navigate, uh, navigate it together. So, now, you know, uh, as we commented last uh, call in January, that uh, uh, we are seeing a very strong recovery, and that actually continues for the whole of the quarter. And we actually have an average connection efficiency. Of, uh, of last quarter is north of 100%, and especially in March, we actually done 120%, which is one of the best of the class in terms of efficiency over the tenure of the financials, right? And so I certainly believe, uh, rather than the Supreme Court decision, you know, which came so late, you know, the entire market was very positive in March. Uh, customers were able to build their business again, they were able to build their sustainability and were paying back. And if you really see the data very carefully, then we find that, you know, our performer NPA, you know, which was actually a 90 day DPD as on December, uh, has, has gone, uh, has gone to a better number now, you know, because that has got reduced. So, in that comparison, we have done fairly well. But of course, uh, we also have to go with the Supreme Court order and then we have to classify uh, all NPA from day one. So that has increased our cross NPA by close to 400, 500 crores. And but in my opinion, those customers are well enough because they have paid us some of, some of the amount in, in the last seven months after the moratorium. And if you really see the whole uh, details there, you know, how much is the picture you believe, how much is the credit you believe, you will find God comfort there. And in, in overall also, in our 15 minutes of uh, we have close to 65,000 customers. So that makes us mm -hmm. average ticket off to that rupees, which is, and that to secure, you know. And we will also appreciate that till March, we were having, not, we were not having any uh, very legalized uh, way to recovery, recovery of money because a lot of individuals were not able to find any kind of uh, legal structure or were not able to push a lot of recovery means in that quarter. But after that quarter, of course, we were allowed, but now suddenly this COVID uh, has come back. So it will take some more time to really have a very hardcore recovery on those accounts. But I'm pretty sure that with that time, you know, those customers will 
able to sustain themselves and will pay us back. You know. In terms of future guidance, again, it's very difficult as the evolving issues. You know, uh, COVID in last two weeks has given us again. You know, um, in terms of the continuity has damaged that thing. You know, people confidence has gone down. Our own team, the external customers. Uh, but it actually has not that too bad in terms of production efficiency. But uh, very difficult to comment for you know in this quarter honestly because uh, I think we need to settle down COVID first and then I think everything about it. Yes, sir, in this 500 odd crores, will we be able to, uh, like, uh, there's, a, there's a pie chart which talks about 62% of the customers in the 60 to 90 DPD. So that might be a little high risk, but the remaining 38% odd customers, do you think that will be, that can be pulled back uh, in maybe uh, in the next couple of quarters? Or do you think that uh, that will also set, take some more time for this, uh, uh, for this 500 odd crores number to also come off materially uh, at this point in time? One very detailed question. I I believe we have given our community on there. It's a working issue. You know, we need to have a bit patience there. But I can only say this that this customer has paid us uh, substantially well uh, from September to uh, March. You know, in those testing times, average ticket time is very low. It's secure. You know, and uh, of course the the breakup is also very supportive that. Uh, 30 percent customer and current, you know, 1 to 30 DPD is 9 percent. So, so yeah. overall it looks okay, you know, but who is uh, to, you know, have to stabilize first to really have a larger comment on that. And you will also appreciate that, you know, if you take out this parallel curve and the money risk, which, I, which we as an executive think is around 1,700 crores, we have a provision of 1,000 crores. So the idea of to really send them the time sheet and not make much of provision so that in, in, even when any eventually come, it does not get our balance sheet. Sure, sure. And so my last question is uh, on the on the business front where we have increased our presence from like 11 odd states to now uh, 15 states and 2 union territories. So we've added like almost 6 uh, new geography uh, uh, and obviously we, uh, we just uh, put one one branch each. But what is your uh, uh, what is your thought process here in the sense that in a COVID year we've expanded our presence in newer geographies. Uh, how are we thinking about it? Like what is your thought process here and uh, what is your uh, plan here on our newer geographies here? Yeah. Thank you. So distribution, you know, we are we are evolving as a, as a bank and so distribution uh, will take uh, its own form and shape in time to come. Uh, we have done a little bit of expansion in uh, quarter three, quarter four because things were uh, was actually looking not much normal. Uh, so, and I don't think that COVID two will have a really long term, uh, you know, tenure. You know, uh, I, I can't comment it, but that's my personal thought uh, process. So, beyond that, you know, again we will see our distribution plan, you know, and uh, we really want to expand. Uh, uh, as a man required, and as a man thinks even more. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, Sanjay. Uh, I think you are on a speakerphone, so your voice is not coming very clearly. So I'll appreciate it. So, 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 uh, give me two minutes, you know. I, I'll join from the other, other call, you know. I'll just, just give me one minute. Just, uh, we are going to stay in a separate room, so phone goes to the different room. Okay, give me, give me one second. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, that is better. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is better. It is better. So, my, yeah. uh, my first question, uh, uh, again, on the first quality, uh, you are not, not audible. 
Mr. Bharat Shah, we are not able to hear you. Uh, uh, is my voice clear now? Uh, so we, yes. uh, you're sounding very soft. Uh, is the voice clear now? Better. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Sanjay, I was saying in the first three quarters, our provision coverage has been about two-thirds. In this quarter, it has come down to roughly half. Now, uh, you know, for uh, uh, non-banking finance company, there is explicit credit cost resolution based on actual experience. So that gives a lot of clarity that what is the credit cost reflected and what is likely to be there, assuming the judgment is made right. Banks still have more uh, roving kind of provisions. So we have to rely on, uh, you know, actual assessment and judgment of the uh, bank concern. So do you think uh, uh, these increase in the GNPA, but uh, provision coverage coming down to half rather than normal two-thirds, you feel confident uh, that this coverage is adequate? And as it stands today, you have no reason to believe uh, that uh, there are any additional costs on the asset book uh, than what, is, what have you provided till now. That is why uh, a good question, you know. So, and you will you will appreciate that uh, this is one of the most uh, uh, unprecedented time, you know. We as executive only have to uh, guess and you know build your experience around creating any kind of provisions. So historically, uh, if you really see that, you know, one third kind of money can be lost in the uh, GNPA number, right? And we have done close to 50%, you know, and in that 50%, you will also appreciate that the 90 days is only, 90 days and above is only 1,000 crores, you know? So for me, actually, if, if I do my own calculation on the balance sheet side, then we believe that we are actually covering around 80 to 90 percent, you know. And and it, as I already commented that my average ticket on a 90 days book is around 2 lakh rupees, which is secured either by vehicle or by real estate, you know. So I think it's a, it's a temporary phenomenon where we have a slippages, but with the time it will come back, you know. Now, you know, the COVID-2 has just come, right? And honestly, April has not been that bad in terms of collection efficiency. It has gone 5% or maybe 7%, you know, today is a closing day, but it, been, it, it is around 5-7% dip from the, from the last April. I mean, not, not last April, the last April was not, normal, was not normal one, but on a normal April month, it is a 5% down. So, so I would believe that as of now, I strongly believe that we are fully covered. Right. So, uh, essentially, you think that is it tends to be what we have provided and what we will be recognizing the book is uh, adequate? Mr. Shah, we are not able to hear you clearly. Uh, okay, my apologies. Is the uh, voice clear now? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay, sorry, my apologies. Uh, uh, as, as it stands today, you have every reason to believe that what we have recognized and what we have provided is adequate. And from where it stands, uh, it is unlikely that there is a rude shock on that number. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. My uh, second question, Sanjay, is on uh opex uh, while uh, you've been very clear uh, from the beginning that uh, our business plans growth investments into building the business and technology would continue and therefore uh, expenses would be at a little elevated level for a while before uh, the operating leverage kicks in so uh, I, I suppose uh, the higher cost in the fourth quarter that we are seeing uh, on a related basis is merely extension of that, and there is nothing unusual other than that. So uh, that's true. You know, we need to keep on investing in our franchise. 
and uh, technology remains our key focus area and technology does not come easy and it's an expensive uh, medium right uh, in, in the initial years you know you need to invest on people uh, uh, the the, uh, the, the people, the tech, and everything, right? So there the bank would continue to invest, and and I strongly believe for next 10 years, if AU has to become one of the most uh, prominent bank in this country, then our digital journeys and tech-led full initiative has to be top-notch, you know? So we are really committed at that side. So, so that expenses are there. We have launched credit card. We have launched video banking. So, that little bit of uh, cost has come from those initiatives also. But one of the items which was ESOP, you know, which has been uh, debited last quarter, you know, is also one of the reasons where you have little bit of elevated cost. Other than that, everything has been very normal one. Last thing on that ESOP cost, uh, I saw 59 crore debited in this quarter. Uh, I just wanted the factual detail. What was the total ESOP cost uh, charge uh, in fiscal 20 and total ESOP cost charge in fiscal 21 in entirety? Well, like, can we give this offline? Because yeah, sure. it will be required for the day. So I will ask my CFO to be in touch with you and then they will provide you. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sanjay, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Renish Bhuva from ICCI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, and comments sir, on a uh, great set of numbers uh, in this really difficult time. Uh, so, sir, just a couple of questions. One is on, uh, again, on this, uh, you know, 90, less than 90 days liquidity pool. Uh, so, uh, you know, just uh, trying to understand over here, you know, why uh, we have sort of uh, safety recognition. Uh, as uh, in this slide, we are mentioning that, uh, you know, this pool is uh, sort of not uh, in pain as we stand today, I mean, in terms of the March numbers. Uh, you know, almost 13% uh, of the book is current and almost 80% of uh, the book is paying. So what is the rationale behind, uh, you know, uh, 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 accelerating any recognition in Q4 uh, rather than waiting for uh, these loan accounts to uh, recover? No, no. So by virtue of Supreme Court order, we were not supposed to tag any account as NPA till 23rd of March. You know, so right. December when we announced our results, it was a 90 DPD as of 31st December, which we classified as gross performer NPS. So that uh, we got reduced uh, by by March, but because 23rd March when Supreme Court asked to tag NPA, you know, as hmm. per the regulation, we need to tag it from 1st of September. So whole NPA tagging came in the last week of. March. That is why we recognized all those uh, NPLs. Uh, many of the accounts which were not actually uh, uh, 90 plus, but they were tagged as NPL because once tag as once subpass as 90 days has to be mm -hmm. tagged as NPLs. Got it. So you are saying maybe after September they could have paid uh, something and then uh, would have fallen to NPL and again they might have started paying in March. And yes. Have to yes. 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 Got Correct. it. Uh, and so, sir, secondly, on the uh, credit cost side, of course, you know, FY20, uh, uh, we have utilized the AWAS gain on building the buffer. And now we are uh, carrying uh, around 1 billion of uh, provisioning buffer to take care of, uh, you know, any adverse impact of uh, the second wave. Uh, but, I mean, based on the uh, current uh, uh, status of our book, I mean, do you feel this 1 billion would be enough to... Uh, sort of so take care of any adverse impact or you feel, uh, you know, uh, as and when we go ahead, we'll assess the impact and maybe we take a call in Q1 to uh, build further buffer or not? So, 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 yeah. So what happened, if you really carefully see us last full one year, we actually hmm. have made our balance sheet more stronger, you know. Our net worth has gone up by 43%. In spite of, you know, 750 crore or uh, crore kind of provision in last year itself, right? So, and we really want to really concentrate more on strengthening our balance sheet and look, and, and who can, you know, actually predict how COVID-2 would be, you know? Correct. So, in the precaution, we have built a small 
uh, contingency provision so that in mm. case uh, in case in future we want to build more and more, it, it, it should help us. You know, so it's okay. a start point to create a buffer, and mm. uh, as as things evolve, we'll create more buffers. But but we have that margin, you know, because our fees are around 14 and a half, 15 percent. So Correct. we have enough yield available us to cover this kind of risk, you know. So and we have actually grown our balance sheet stronger and stronger in last one year. Got it, got it. Actually, this uh, last question from my side, and this is more on the uh, competition side and market share game side. Uh, you know, so we have seen a pretty sharp, uh, you know, disruption growth in second half. And uh, we are still, you know, sort of hearing most of the uh, our uh, fear set. I mean, the closely competitors like NBFCs on the vehicle uh, finance segment are still struggling with either lower collection or maybe they are still cautious in growing balance sheet. Uh, so, you know, what is the scenario? I mean, uh, uh, the sharp uh, disbursement is reflection of our, uh, uh, you know, sheer capability to uh, gain market share at accelerated pace, and uh, we are ready to sort of. Uh, expand balance sheet uh, even in FY22, uh, assuming the second wave going to stay for, let's say, uh, for next couple of months, or we will sort of, you know, a pause and wait. And wait. So, you know, uh, that's the way AU operates, honestly, because uh, our wheel and SBL and housing franchise very old, very seasoned. You know, they know uh, how to uh, operate in this difficult uh, uh, period and last year they demonstrated that you know in spite of quarter one quarter two so bad quarter three quarter four we we, we came back so strongly right so that's the mm. whole distribution and the and the franchise which we want to operate and hopefully uh, I would say uh, it's so difficult to comment uh, for this year so uh, I would only say that have we should have any patience around how COVID two actually you know evolves and uh, how the normalcy comes and then we will take the appropriate actions but okay but so any comment on the market share gain i mean uh, uh, so we we are too small honestly we are too small to talk about market share and all those things you know um, uh, our real book is around close to two billion our SBL book is close to around two billion our housing book is close to 2,000 crores, you know, so it's a long way to go, you know, so I think I, I, I can only assure my children on this call that, you know, your your bank is very good in shape, is in very good uh, in terms of positioning themselves, you know, we are evolving as a very stronger franchise, uh, the team has, it has shown their commitment and character. And I believe, you know, in this time, uh, if team holds uh, themselves and the whole whole uh, uh, negativity is not there, actually. So, again, when a good times will come, we'll be there. Got it, sir. I, I think that reflects in our, uh, 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 you know, uh, resting class ROE, ROE for the full year. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Nanawati from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to check. Uh, basically, we've done uh, pretty well in the last two quarters in terms of uh, disbursement, uh, pushing the pedal really hard uh, once we saw the growth opportunity. But if you look at uh, last uh, two quarters disbursement, that's basically now one third of our AUM, which is basically relatively much lower vintage book. And if you look at even uh, the COVID environment, last one year disbursement is half of uh, our AUMs. Just wanted to uh, see if you can provide any qualitative comments on uh, the behavior of that book versus the more relatively more vintage book. That's point one. And secondly, uh, does does that uh, kind of uh, change your growth trajectory to some extent where you'd want to see how the book pans out before you kind of... Uh, uh, continue to you know accelerate on the growth front. Yeah, that's it from my side. Yeah, I mean, so uh, good question. So I would say uh, because uh, when once we started this was spent, uh, back in quarter three and quarter four, so there was uh, uh, stringent credit policy were applied, and we were also taking a lot of caution in around around our underwriting. Customer was also very caution around taking him as a, uh, taking a loan also. So I would say uh, it was more an informed call. 
So, uh, and you know, you, we, and it, it was not a good time, right? So, it was, there's an old saying that, you know, bad books are created in a, in a good time. But I would say it is not a that good time and we created a book. So, I strongly believe that that book should, uh, should have better outcome in times to come. And once things become normal, you know, because this vaccination uh, drive becomes very effective, you know, a lot of medication comes and becomes a lot more effective, I think normalcy will be there. And then we'll again we'll take the call how we want to underwrite and how we, how we want, to book, uh, really want to build book. So, uh, as of now, I'm worried about that um, the book which we wrote last year, you know, can be an issue around us. Yes, so the reason, uh, sir, I'm asking this is uh, basically with the whole wave 2 hitting, one comes to realization that probably, you know, uh, uh, there's a good chance that COVID will, you know, uh, stay for a longer time. We'll have a probably a shorter wave 3. The intensity will keep on decreasing or the impact will keep on decreasing, but at least you, uh, you will have a more... Uh, frequent patchy disruptions ahead as well, right? So to that extent, does the growth strategy uh, take, takes a backseat for now or no? Yeah, so uh, so we are not thinking about growth strategy, honestly, because what we've done in quarter three and quarter four was because how the market behaved, right? So again, the call will be very on the very... Uh, informed basis, you know, how the market is uh, shaping, how and why customers are really looking for the credits, you know. So that uh, call will take as we, you know, will approach that period. Otherwise, uh, I would say, uh, if you really see that quarter three, quarter four, when we're underwriting, you know, people were more prepared, you know, because this time people are more prepared for COVID. Last, time, last year when we had a lockdown, we never had a, uh, we were not having any preparation around it, right? right? So the way the whole book performed, you know, you will appreciate that our 80% book is current, you know, and uh, so so 80% book is current in March is, is, is a very high point for us, you know? So, so I would believe that once normalcy will come in, so people will again able to sustain and will start meeting us. Understood. Lastly, uh, the taxi aggregator uh, segment and linked segment which got impacted in wave one, is it largely sitting now in uh, uh, NPAs or there is something which is sitting in uh, uh, 60 to 90 DPD as well? So taxi segment has uh, has impacted more. So so that's why their NPAs will be more. But specific data we can share with you offline. Sure. That's it from me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Nadesh Jain from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So again, on uh, asset quality, uh, I believe overall performance is good. But, sir, uh, your commentary at the end of Q3 results where we said that uh, uh, the, 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 there will not be any requirement of incremental provisions uh, we have already reached peak of NPA. Uh, you also highlighted that the overall uh, challenging pool is around 1,500 crores. Uh, so Q1, Q, we have not seen any improvement in uh, underlying asset quality, despite Q4 being a very, very strong quarter uh, from an economic standpoint. And probably in these numbers, we have not seen any impact of second wave as of now. So what is the reason for uh, uh, this this uh, this uh, 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 this out uh, outcome on the on the asset quality side? No, I think I explained uh, very detailed uh, in last four five questions. So again, I repeat that if you really see our asset quality, you can't see only one bucket. You need to see the whole by bucket right from you know current, which is eighty percent, which is as good as last. Uh, February, March, you know, then if you see my one EMI bucket or, you know, which is up again around, around 9%. So I believe if, if these numbers are there, uh, we should strongly believe that customers are generally has come back, you know, and that was our overall commentary. And, and if you see the collection efficiency, which is, uh, which is actually remained around not of 100% for whole quarter, right? So that was also very good. And of course, the whole 90 DPD, you know, which generally at this segment, as an NDFC, whole NDFC, we always track 90 DPD, has actually got reduced, you know. 
and and for uh, some of you know supreme court order which came in last week of march you know we actually really missed that honestly so that has made us that you know around 400 tagged on that particular uh, quarter right particular week so i don't think that because of that one action we can believe that the, the correction efficiency or the book has not saved us well right so in my opinion i'm very happy the way our markets are the way the yields are and the way we have operated in the ground you know it's a fantastic outcome sure sir, sure and secondly sir can you comment on the credit card uh, uh, product that we are going to launch next this financial year uh, how that will have an impact on our pnl uh, what sort of uh, investment we are ready to make uh, in that sense because i think in the in the initial few years it could be a drag on pnl and probably after a couple of years it may start to contribute to top uh, to bottom line so if you can give some so, comment uh, uh, it's on it's on project basis it's on is as of now on project uh, stage uh, we would love to comment uh, more on this in our next call Okay, sir. Th thank you, sir. That's it for my side. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hiral Desai from Anivez Portfolio Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Sanjay. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you know, one more question on asset quality. You know, we've obviously harped on it enough, but you know, you've spoken last time on the the stress segments. You know, so school, uh, taxi, bus, apparel, retailer. So, just wanted to understand if all of that is now, you know, within the stress pool of either the GNP or the restructured book. So, uh, I would say we should not color every customer. with the sector approach because you know even uh, a taxi owner who is more stable who has more better contract is paying us you know and maybe some customer is over leverage or has some issues is not paying us so i i don't want to color that every uh, retailer or every taxi owner has become bad right, right, right. maybe little bit more right and that yes. you know has to be under 4% correct so yes. I, I would appreciate that if if my shareholder uh, understand this the kind of yield we deal in, the kind of market we deal in. You know, if you compare that number with any of the our peers, you will find AU numbers far far better than that. Okay, okay. And the other thing is, you know, given that this pandemic has been sort of you know like once in a century, uh, what are the changes that we made to the the underwriting internally? And you know, sort of going back to what Amit asked, you know, given that uh, there is a lot of uncertainty around, uh, the disbursement growth has been fairly strong in H2. So, you know, what are the changes that you made to the underwriting to remain confident that you know we don't have any asset quality accidents in next uh, 18 to 24 months? So I would say that you know, actually, to be very honest with you all, the people that. i got more uh, strength that you know that the, the kind of underwriting we are doing from years actually passed the test of this pandemic you know if you really right. see my 90 plus is 2.7 on an average yield of 14 and a half you know with a with a security of wheel or real estate you know what what should i expect more to be really honest you know so and i'm we are not in macro finance we are not in gold finance we are actually in a asset which actually brings business for the customer side right? so so i mean not much of changes we have done in our underwriting rather i have told our team that you know what we have done over the year you have to revalidate your approach around it you know so and you know customer has also become very cautious to be very honest that nobody wants to borrow money just to default it you know and we actually don't give them personal loan we give them an hardcore security net loan you know so so i am very honestly i am very happy you know let the things again settle down maybe a quarter two quarter but your bank is on very strong footing in terms of underwriting in terms of collection in terms of engagement with the customer side right? that is more important for me <laughs> And then the other is the geographic mix that you share of the AUM. If I look at uh, that, the growth in Gujarat has been much slower versus rest of the other markets, and it's not a very large book. It's I think about three uh, and a half thousand odd crores. So, any specific reason why Gujarat's growth has been a bit slower? 
गुजरात इज कब मार्केट यू नो लॉट मच अवेयरनेस अराउंड कस्टमर अराउंड दी होल डिलीवरी फ्रॉम दी फाइनेंसर्स लैंडर्स इज टू कॉम्पिटेटिव मार्केट वी आल्सो डोंट वांट टू फोकस मच देयर वी आर एन ओल्ड फ्रेंचाइज यू नो so uh, we we all we uh, ourselves have taken caution approach around gujarat market okay okay but this is not related to any sort of accidents in terms of asset quality or anything of that sort no 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 okay okay and the last question that i have is you know a lot of these e-commerce offers that you've run through fy21 uh, can you share the the kind of money that you spent in terms of the the cashback or offers so we we'll share you offline okay okay so lastly sanjay if you can just give me the cost of savings account for the year uh, okay it's sub six uh, cost of savings account uh, is it is it there 5.7% is the average uh, cost of the savings account book got it got it thank you thank you and all the best The next question is from the line of Manish Shukla from City Shop. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning and thank you for the opportunity. A uh, couple of clarification. Uh, if you go to slide twenty-six, uh, you have given the DPD classification uh, for the Onan pool. Uh, that maps with the DPD that we have on slide twenty-five, right? I mean, like for like, as of March twenty-one. So, what's the question, Manish? Sorry, can you repeat it? Slide twenty-five gives the DPD for the entire book, and slide twenty-six yeah. gives the DPD for the Onan pool. Yeah. I'm assuming that the DPD of slide twenty-six is a subset of the DPD of slide twenty-five. Correct, 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 correct. Yeah. Okay. The other question is that, uh, as I, if I understand you right, it is because of the Supreme Court verdict that the additional uh, 440 odd crore has been tagged as NPA, uh, but yet you have chosen to provide as much as 33 percent on that book, which is in line with your historical LGD. Uh, and I'm assuming that this was not part of your stress consideration as of December. So just trying to understand the provisioning policy on this uh, 440 additional crores. We have come through in the March quarter. Yeah, so we have done little bit of acceleration uh, provision uh, on this book, but on lesser than 90 DPD is generally remain in the in, in the as per the policy one. So nothing specific, but you know you have to classify which book what you have done. But overall, the approach was to remain in in, in a safer zone. And uh, is it fair to say that the additional 440 or crore, which has been tagged under less than 90 DPD, uh, most of what would have been their uh, status as of December, as in how much of it would have been current, uh, approximately? So, so we have given you the online pool the classification where we say that 13% is current, 9% is uh, 130. Uh, That as of 31st March, sir. I'm assuming I'm asking for equivalent number as of 30th December. Oh, so we'll give you, we'll give you separately. Okay, thank you. Those are my questions. Yeah, the amount was very less, hundred crore. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Sakre from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Uh, hey, good morning. Sir, uh, first question was uh, some color on on April performance uh, in terms of you know what share of our deals and SBL customers are able to operate during some form of lockdowns uh, and any level of uh, any color on on level of collections that we are able to achieve. So I already commented that uh, business volume has gone down. Uh, our branch uh, footfall is also gone down. Uh, team speed is also very low because uh, the sudden surge, you know, everybody was caught unaware. And I would say collection efficiency is also down by five percent in comparison to normal April month. Uh, difficult to comment as of now because specifically because today is the last day. But uh, my worry would be, you know, how we actually shape up in the month of May. Or you know, June I can't comment because uh, the surge has been in last two weeks only. Got it.
uh and sir secondly uh, the 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 initial uh, you know commentary around some caution uh, uh, for the future outlook is is the caution more on the growth side or are you also sort of cautious on how the asset quality outcomes could you know behave uh, in the next few quarters the caution is over all honestly because uh, uh, this is very unprecedented right you know uh, covid one actually was more around lockdown uh because of uh, anxiety around lockdown but now this is anxiety around health so, uh, so we need to really understand that you know how the whole uh, situation will evolve so caution is generally right you know and actually to be very honest i commented this in the month of march itself that you know we really had to be lot much of caution in next four quarters so we continue to keep uh, eye on this whole development and take the necessary actions Sure. And sir, last uh, data question is, uh, what share of our customers would be you know holding two or more products from AU? So, in terms of over uh, lapping around asset is very low. You know, very low. Actually, 10% customer will be over lapping around in assets because we don't fund uh, two loans to one customer. And in terms of uh, uh, deposit versus uh, asset customer is around 20%. Okay. okay so sir, that, that comment uh, on uh, on extra NPL because of uh, some customer having a NPL in, in one of the other products, is that is that for an AU, other AU product or like across the banking system uh, are we referring there? Sorry, I'm not able to understand the question. Uh, sir, on that uh, slide with that uh, coi chart, where we are saying that 13% is current, but that doesn't NPS the customer and yeah, other things. Current means that he might have one account which is 90 plus. With, with AU? Yes, yes, sir, with AU, with AU. Okay, yes, okay, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Got it, sir. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Pranav Gupta from Aditya Birla Sun Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, so, just a clarification, I'm sorry to develop the asset quality part again. Uh, so, I wanted to understand that, uh, you know, uh, this 13% uh, of this 1.5% pool is current, right? So, effectively, uh, you know, even if they had been tagged as NPA because of the vacation of the Supreme Court uh, order, had they been current, shouldn't they have been updated in the same quarter immediately? Uh, am I understanding this correctly or am I missing something? So we'll answer you offline, yeah, because I have answered a lot many questions around asset quality. So if you don't mind, we can uh, connect you separately and answer this one. Yeah, sure, sir, no problem. Uh, uh, the second question is uh, on the on the cost side. So, uh, you know, uh, despite the pandemic being, you know, uh, uh, part of us, uh, part of this, uh, you know, entire year, just wanted to understand, you know, we've added employees quite aggressively uh, throughout the year. Uh, whether this is uh, more on the collection side because of the additional efforts required, or whether, you know, it is uh, 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 more on the growth side, uh, you know, can you explain some of that? Yes, sir, it's overall. It's the overall uh, building of the franchise. So, like I said, you we started credit card, video banking, QR codes. So, team joined there also. We built a little bit more strength to our collection team, overall uh, home loan team, you know. So, that's the investment we have done in last uh, two quarters, you know. So, uh, so that we hold uh, data. Okay, and just just one last question uh, from my end. So you know you mentioned that cost of size is about five point seven percent, and you know we've seen uh, a few other SFBs as well. You know sort of offer higher uh, SAR rates and even higher TD rates. You know uh, Ghana deposits. Well, I understand that uh, you know uh, given the size uh, and given your yield, it makes complete sense to acquire uh, deposits even at this cost. But just wanted to understand: Have we, uh, you know, considered uh, cutting deposit rates at all, given the you know surplus equity which is there in the system, or uh, you know has that not been a consideration set at all for us? So, Rishi, can you answer this? 
यह ऋषि है Uh, see our peak deposit rates over the last 12 months on the uh, tds that retail tds came from 7.77% to 6.5% right and uh, the structure of our savings uh, rate also actually allows th- that while we offer a peak rate of 7% the overall blended cost of our sar book is 5.7 right so uh, we have been very conscious about the rate at which uh, we are raising our deposits and uh, 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 the other very important thing which we have done uh, over the last 12 months is actually we reduced our dependence on bulk deposits and uh, granularized and retailized our uh, you know deposit base that i think uh, uh, along with the growth in the sa book are the uh, more important uh, movements which have happened in the uh, book and the focus will remain in further granularizing the uh, deposits uh, over the next couple of years sure so that's helpful yeah, yeah, yeah. sure uh, thank you so much that will be all from my end thank you The next question is on the line of Rahul Maheshwari from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, who call well at your end? Uh, Sorry, can you hear me now? Hello. Uh, so slightly better. Yeah. Good morning, uh, uh, sir. Uh, who call well at your end? uh so uh, just uh, two questions sir uh, not on asset quality uh, but sir on on current uh, can you give what kind of rejection rate is going on according to you uh, looking at what uh, the things were better in jan and currently how titan you have done in your uh, trade uh, lending or disbursement uh, pattern and second thing sir so on uh, um, uh, looking at the current stance and definitely this uh, on am which you told that eventually it will become on a normalized base but uh, any estimate uh, will uh, how the pcr would be moving on uh, looking at the current situation whether you want to be more conservative or you would go according how uh, how the things are moving on the ground on the selection efficiency side Uh, yeah sorry i am not able to hear you very clearly but uh, i believe i have answered um, um, all these uh, questions in my previous discussion but to be again repetitive on that side i really want to say again that we will take the caution and conservative approach to strengthen our balance sheet you know so uh, I, I, and that stance will continue for this year also till the things become normalized you know so uh, and for rest of your question i believe my team can take offline and explain you sir but uh, currently what is the rejection rate your uh, uh, in terms of the file which is coming and what it was in january and can you give some color on that so uh, so that rejection means log in to credit right yeah 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 so that got uh, uh, so logging to credit this uh, the rejection ratio actually gone up by 10% so we we were rejecting a 10% more than the normal time and uh, do you uh, and looking at in april month at the end we are coming do you expect uh, it will further in such a difficult to comment as of now because suddenly slow down has as has been there so we will uh, we will we are watching the situation and we'll we'll see how we'll uh, operate in this scenario okay hope so i'll get back with the team on uh, ctr yeah thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll be taking the last question sir from the line of jay floy from bona vista management please go ahead Mr. Jeff Loy, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Jeff Loy, if you're able to hear us, please go ahead with the question. Uh, 
There seems to be no response from the line of Mr. Jay Floyd, and that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Asim Pant for his closing comments. Thanks, thanks, Ivan. Uh, I just want to uh, add one clarification to a question that was earlier asked on the 13% current, uh, you know, DPD in the Onan pool. Just to be clear, and we mentioned it in the slide as well on slide 26. This is that that uh, Onan, despite being current, mainly because it is linked to a loan which is in the 1 to 90 DPD bucket and not 90 plus. And we mentioned that in the slide as well. Uh, and with this, we'll close the call. On behalf of AU Bank, I would like to thank you all once again for joining us, and we hope that you remain safe and well. Please reach out, reach out to the investor relations team should you have any further questions or clarifications. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan. On behalf of AU Small Finance Bank, that concludes this conference call. Yeah.